In this video, we're going to talk about what happens to the pH or the pOH of a solution of a strong acid or base. And there are two important things that you have to remember about strong acids and bases. The first is that uh, we know that strong acids and bases, because of the fact that um, in the case of an acid, in the case of a strong acid, we know that uh, strong acids are stronger than H3O+. So because of that, when they ionize, they can go completely to products because the H3O plus is not strong enough to push back against them, meaning that when they, when they ionize, we get complete products and we don't have any equilibrium because there's nothing to push back against the strong acid. And the same goes for a strong base. Strong bases make OH minus in solution, and there's no base that's stronger than OH minus uh, in, in water. So um, when you put a strong acid or base into solution, it goes 100% to products. And so what we're going to see in the example is that we can actually, knowing that, use that to our advantage. Because when you add a strong acid or base, it ionizes, producing a concentration of either H3O plus in the, in the case of an acid or OH minus in the case of a base. And because the concentration is directly related to the concentration of the acid we put in, because it's a stoichiometric conversion from the acid to the H3O plus or the acid to the OH or, or the base to the OH minus, we can say that the uh, the resulting concentration of the H3O plus or OH minus will control the pH of the solution. So um, whatever you, concentration you put in for HCl, for example, will be the concentration of H3O plus in the solution. So let's take a look at an example of this. Okay, so this example says calculate the concentration of H3O plus and OH minus for a solution of 0.250 molar HCl. Okay, so when we put HCl into water, what we're basically getting at is that this HCl being a strong acid is going to go in the forward direction and notice I don't write an equilibrium because we're working with a strong acid to make H3O plus aqueous and Cl minus aqueous. And so if we start with 0 0.250 molar of HCl, uh, since there's a one-to-one -one stoichiometric coefficient, we are going to we're going to wind up with 0 0.250 molar H, H3O plus once this thing ionizes in water. And I mean, you could do the stoichiometry if you want to prove this to yourself. If you have 0 0.250 moles of HCl per liter of water, and we know that for every one mole of HCl, there is one mole of H3O plus, you can see that we're going to get 0 0.250 moles per liter of H3O plus. And so now the question becomes, how can we get the concentration of H3O plus and the concentration of OH minus? Well, in this case, the concentration of H3O plus is going to equal 0 0.250 molar. And so if we want to get the concentration of OH minus, we have to use our KW expression. So we have that 1 times 10 to the minus 14 is equal to our concentration of H3O plus, which is 0 0.250 molar times our concentration of OH minus, which we don't know. And if we solve for the concentration of OH minus, this is going to give us a concentration of 4 times 10 to the minus 14th. And so what we see is that we get a stoichiometric conversion of the strong acid to H3O plus. Now let's look at a slightly different example. So in, the, in this case, we have 0.125 molar of barium hydroxide. Now this one is a little bit interesting. Well, first of all, it's a base. But if we look at the stoichiometry, and actually in this case, we don't even have to put water here because it turns out that the barium hydroxide just ionizes directly into barium 2 plus aqueous plus 2 OH minus aqueous. So we're directly, in essence, because this is a soluble hydroxide, we're directly adding OH minus to the water. But what's interesting is we have 0.125 molar of the barium hydroxide. And so now we have to deal with this stoichiometry. So if we have 0.125 moles per liter of barium hydroxide, we have to be careful here. Because for every one mole of barium hydroxide, there are two moles of OH- minus that go into solution. So really, this gives us a concentration of 0 0.250 molar for our concentration of OH-. Minus. And so you have to be careful about that, that you have to make sure when, especially with bases, that you take into consideration the stoichiometry, that there's two moles of the hydroxide for every one mole of barium hydroxide. And if you do the math, you're going to find out that the concentration of H3O plus is the same as above, is the same as the concentration of OH minus in the previous problem. The math just works out that way. So you get 4 times 10 to the minus 14th molar. 
And so this shows you what happens when you have a strong acid base reaction. When you just put a simple strong acid or a strong base into water, what happens and how you work, can work with the concentration. And of course, we can apply our principle of pH to this to calculate a pH or a pOH. We know how to do that um, from uh, the previous video.